Let the cost be taken away. Marabo Shekotenga de Luciava. Make la endo, Jiku Zezo Nevede. Jiku Teria Berota Nagalere Visa Gagaga. Nabolo, Shiko Tegere de Luzezia. Je manga la roche, côté prédique tous ces jours. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The stronghold of that cause over your life will be broken in this service. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whatever God has not planted, that is making life difficult for you. Today, it will be swallowed up by fire. Make that amen louder. Whatever represents a foundational limitation that has held everyone captive in your family, today, the power behind that foundational limitation will be destroyed. And everyone in your family is going home free. Amen. The strong man controlling ancestral causes over your life, over your destiny, over your family. The spell will be broken today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. Put those hands together for the Lord and please get seated. God bless you. I just remembered something now. One close family to me. The son saw a dwarf in his dream. After that dwarf appeared in his dream, he was no longer himself. He was in covenant investing. That was how he was withdrawn. They didn't do anything about it. They just thought that uh, it has been taken care of. Now he is in University of Jaws. The thing appeared again. I said, uh-uh. When he came the first time, what did you do? They said he just prayed and uh, left it like that. I said, ah. I said, we are going back right to your village, to your papa house. As I'm preaching now, I'm going to somebody's village. Yeah. Whatever has been tormenting you from your father's house will be buried by fire. So I gave him prayers to do, which we are going to pray. Please get me paper and bearer, please. After we finish the prayer, that's how God helped him. He escaped the attack. And now he has graduated. Now, another one happened. When some things happen like this, me too, I, I'm surprised. Now, one of my accountants in one of the places I served in, um, in Ahoda, it's not that she's not fertile, though. she's fertile. It's not that the husband does, uh, has low sperm count, though. no, the count is complete. Are you hearing me now? But she kept seeing a strange being in her dream. 
So after a prayer session, I appeared in a dream and I was telling her the things that happened in their family from 1954. They never bombed me that time. So she came and started narrating everything. She says, you wrote them down. As she wrote them down, I looked at it. I said, is your mother around? She said, yes. I said, can I talk to her? Yes. I called the mother. I started telling the mother, see this one, see this one, see this one, see this one. Now you do one. You are going to pray for her and I will pray for her. After that prayer, the strong man that the mother inherited from her own family, the spell was broken. As we are going to pray, the strong man in your father's family, the strong man in your mother's family, that has tied everybody rope, the evil cord will scatter. If you are saying amen, say it better amen. In the first service, we looked at breaking the causes of the law. I hear this. The cause of the law can be summarized in thou shall not do causes. The cause of the law started in Genesis chapter 1 when God said, of all the trees you are free to eat, but this one don't touch. And Satan has smarted Eve and said that that one God said you should not touch is the one you should touch. There's something is hiding from you. Forgetting that God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. God didn't hide anything. Now we looked at almost 15 of them and all of them you could see trace elements of disobedience. Just like now, I say, nobody should sit here. Somebody now come and say, go and sit down there. Pastor cannot do anything. Go and sit down there. Pastor cannot do anything. Now, you may choose to disobey, but you have carried a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's very simple. It's very simple to walk into the cause of the law. All you just need to do is defy what they have said. Do what you want. Simple. And the cheapest way to come out of it, number one, be born again. Number two, walk in wisdom. A wise man foresees evil and hideth himself. A foolish man enter. Some of the things that has brought causes upon us, is not that we, we are blind. We intentionally, choicefully enter them. Number three, engage prayer. A praying man will always, if truly is praying, you know, a praying man will always stay out of the zone of causes. That's why anytime forces are telling you, don't go, this prayer thing is getting too much. Just know that Satan is setting a trap that you must fall inside. For more details, get the tape. In Jesus' name. In this second service, we are going to be dealing with ancestral and foundational limitations. In the third service, we are going to be destroying the causes of household wickedness. I'm reserving more energy for third service. Because I've discovered that some of the things some people are suffering are sponsored by household wickedness. So if they have sponsored anything for you, they will carry it back today. What are causes? We need to know what causes are before we begin to trace them ancestral or their generational roots.
A cause is a force, a demonic force, working against a person or a group of persons. It creates a barrier. A cause is a counter force that fights blessing from entering or staying in somebody's life. A blessing can be proclaimed over a life. But if there is a hidden cause, it will prevent it from entering. A cause also is an evil thing around a body, a soul, and a spirit. And it makes the man's life or the woman's life difficult. Somebody came and told me that, uh, that he saw himself in the midst of dead people. The, de the, de the living is not found among the dead. When you begin to see yourself in the midst of dead people or burial ground, know that they have fired an arrow of death. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Anybody under such spell, today you will be free. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. A cause also is being greeted with failure when success is smiling at others. We call it near success syndrome. You are greeted with failure while others are greeted by success. A cause is a sentence calling for punishment. Or destruction on a person. These are mostly sponsored by evil authors. When someone is someone before an evil author, it could be a cause of untimely death, a cause of accident. I just remember that professor now that just went to his village to fine-tune his house. And as he came back, they called the name Fatigue. They just gave him, they just said he should just rest. And before you know what's happening, they just gave him one injection to make him sleep. He didn't come back. Whoever has called for a death sentence over your life, I stand on this altar, their arrow go back against them. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. A cause is a, an evil mandate given to demonic powers to wreak havoc on a person, place, or things. That's why you just suddenly, some people's business just go down. Their finances just crash. Business does not just crash. There are forces mobilized. To make it crash. And at times it could be you just showing some kindness, giving some assistance to someone, not knowing that the person you are giving assistance to is thinking of how you will be brought down. I've said it before, maybe there are some people that are new here. If I go village, hear me, look at me. If I go village, before I give you money, I don't pray, put inside my money. You know why? Poverty is the strongest witchcraft. So you are giving somebody money now. You don't know the one that is a bad one. That will be talking, say, hey, money don't enter my hand. So me too, as before I release it, le kushabare. Oh, yeah, follow this money. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? So that if they want to trace who give the money, 
and they won't shoot, the thing go revise. <laughs> no wonder in my in my family, if they want anybody to give money, they don't. They say, make pastor give you, make pastor will give contribute, give pastor back. Make pastor give you, make pastor give you. <laughs> I remember one young man that was doing well, very young man, promising, doing well. He has sold all his lands. We'll be dealing with that in third service. But I'm mentioning it now because once an evil power is mandated or delegated to work havoc, the end product is a wreck. They can wreck you to the point that you can even sell your car. And everybody in the house is trekking. A cause is laboring under the burden of backwardness and stagnancy. God forbid. Anyone that is going backward that is under the sound of my voice. I am pushing you forward today in the name of Jesus. Whatever they used to be dragging your life, your career, your family backward, that cause will be broken today in the name of Jesus. A cause is struggling without corresponding fulfillment. What have you got to show for your 20 years of service, of labor? What have you to show? They see you every morning, you wear a tie, you dress up, you take off, come back. What have you to show that you have worked 25 years, 30 years? Labor, no corresponding result. It's not a sign that you are blessed. It's not a sign that you are, you are fruitful. Because the blessing of God is all around. So if that side of your life is not, is not responding well, man, you need to do something about it. You need to do something about it. A cause is when a present, a present, your presence generates hatred and resentment. There are some people, the moment they step into a place, nothing works. Hatred, resentment. I know that some are sponsored. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I didn't mention this in the first service. If you hate somebody, will not do you anything. You don't buy market. Should I show it in the Bible? Psalm 89. So if somebody just stay here now saying hate me, I'll be clapping hand for you. Because God will destroy you. Psalm 89, let's read from verse 20. I know some people have not seen that scripture. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The next verse. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. The next verse now. I will beat down his foes before his face and prick them. Is it your Bible? Nami right arm. Pastor Nami right arm. So don't get yourself trouble about who doesn't like you or who like you. It's not important. See what's in the wait for them. God said, I will plague. God can just open the door and the enemy will just strike you. You like me? Fine. If you don't like me, I thank God for you. Because something must catch you. So you can joyfully bring yourself under a curse for hating somebody for nothing. Nothing. So even if they induced you to hate the person, you are a fool. Because your head is not correct. 
can somebody just buy a course for you and you just collect? You just collect a cheap course. Cheap course. Cheap. Boah. I will plague them that hates you. That's why anywhere I go, I don't feel threatened now whether somebody likes me or doesn't like me. Now your business, oh. My own is that I will never stand on your path and I will never hinder your blessing. Cross my road. You ca can you now see how some people just cheaply carry us? Cheaply. Cheaply. Cheap you just cheaply went and carry a course. Why? Just like I'm saying in the third service, such could be sponsored. It could be induced. But who is sponsoring? Whoever is sponsoring hatred for you. A Jehovah overdue we plague them. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Lastly, a cause creates displacement from the place of destiny to a place of rejection. That is, you are displaced from your appointed place to a place of non-entities. A cause can drive you out from your chair, from your throne. A cause forbids you from staying in good places. A cause forbids you from meeting good people that will help you. A cause can fuel you to fight your destiny helper. So anytime you see yourself walking against your destiny helper, know that there is a cause following you. Do you know why? It wants to abort the help that wants to answer in your life. I remember one young man we did deliverance for about two years ago. Anytime someone major wants to help him, I got to know about this because I once had an, a pastoral assistant in one of my stations. All the people that have made efforts to help him, even through me, he ended up fighting them. Now, one of the chief accountants, Delta Status of Assembly, I contacted him and says, I said, uh, I said, Devo, you, you are in position. I shouldn't be looking for how this man should be here. Help me give him something now. It's okay, sir, because you have said so. The man started. In the process, he began to misbehave. He began to speak against the man. The man heard it. He said, Pastor, I will disobey you for the first time. I said, what is it? He said, this man you say I should help. Look at what he's saying about me. I say, remove your hand. Okay. He later came and begged. And now called my former Dickens board chairman. Dan. I say, help this man. Even if now a little, little supply making they do. As he started, the demonic spirit came again. A pastor. I say he's a pastor. The demonic spirit came again. He misbehaved. That one dropped. And I called him. I said, I said, Pastor, something they do you. <laughs> I was raw. I said, something they do you. I will be involved in your prayer. I said, something they do you. Why is it that all the people that I have brought to help you, something will just do you to make you fight them? I said, so, he now opened up. I said, me too. I'm not waiting. They do me. Is it normal? No, is it normal that someone wants to help you and demonic powers are moving you to fight the person, speak evil about, about against the person? Is it normal? As I speak with you till now, nobody has helped him. We started the prayer. Day two of the prayer, I saw him and his brother covered with a mortar. You know, mother would use a pound, pound the arm now. 
So I said, stop the prayer. I've seen it. I said, begin to call for fire. Let fire swallow up that evil matter. Those are the activities of Kobun powers. I said, these are the things you are going to do. Do it too, because you are the one involved. When you finish, you come back. Now, I've done the first part by tearing open that evil mortar. I said, go and finish it up now. As the thing finished, it looks as if he was, he was free, he was to get a job in Delta State Polytechnic. All of a sudden, it didn't change again. I called him and said, you don't do something again. Now hear me. If you must be free from the torment of foundational limitation and ancestral powers, hear me, you must make up your mind to stay free. What are foundational limitations? We have looked at what causes are. What are foundational limitations? Foundational limitations are products of evil dedication. And most of these evil dedications, they are ancestral in nature. What do we mean by ancestral? Ancestral means your family lineage your father your mother grandfather great grandfather great grand grand grandfather now these people if you don't have a clue to your family history one way i know god can show you mercy is to show you pictures through dreams are you following what i'm saying now that's why if you ignore some of those dreams you see, you will increase your suffering. Some of those dreams you see is a picture of the evil transactions, the evil liabilities that have taken place in your family lineage. Foundational limitations are products of evil dedication. And this dedication places a limit. The places embargoes. Heights that could never be attained. Success that will never be achieved. Evil dedications take place when the family head, not now, those days, devote and mention that everyone that will come through this lineage, through this family, will worship this. To some, they go to the point of putting inscriptions. On your body. Some they put their own hair. Some they put their own on their breast. Some they put their own on their mark. Some they put on their forehead. The moment those inscriptions take place, it is now an ordination. It is now what? An ordination. That's how some people catch marine spirits. Spirit husband and spirit wife. The moment evil dedications take place and this inscription, your ordained glory is exchanged. That's why there will be contentions on your glory. Why? There were dedications that we are done that are fighting the glory now. They fight the glory. They fight the purpose of God over your life. I remember a young man, and I had this story 
Very pitiable. Their great grandfather used to serve in the shrine. So what they did was just to throw away the thing. They think that they have destroyed it. His father too was a victim. They are village pastor. The father fought the pastor, tear the man clothes. So when he too became a pastor, are you hearing what I'm saying now? He fought his senior pastor, tear in clothes. So after a while, he started apologizing. He said he didn't know. But in the process of prayer, <laughs> revelation started coming one by one. And I went and asked his father. They said that uh, you fought your pastor and tear your pastor clothes. The pastor said, yes, I tear him. <laughs> he was the one that now told his father that uh, you have done an evil thing and you have brought a cause for me done an evil thing and you have brought a cause for me. The father said, I'm not the one that brought the cause. Our grandfather was serving a shrine. So the thing is fighting us back. You hear me? Anything you fail to fight now, you transfer it as a liability to your children. <laughs> you, you, you better get ready. You must take it by violence and you must fight your way through. If you don't fight it, hear me? Your children, they will carry it. So you must fight it. I want us to understand that ancestral powers, they are custodians of ancestral causes. They act as the strong man behind the cause. They act as strong man to enforce the cause to the letter. Which means anyone in that family that wants to raise his head must have a contention before he can be free. Ancestral causes are controlled by others of evil dedication. Everyone that comes through that family or through that lineage is subject to their dictates. If you must break away, you must not act ignorant. You must have an understanding that Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. But I want you to understand this. By, uh, by redemption, you have what we call advantage position. Why? We are seated with Christ Jesus. Far above. Principalities and what? Powers. Advantage position. That advantage position is what guarantees the enforcement of your victory. The enforcement of your victory. So you must contend for your glory to be established. You must contend to make sure that you, you don't end up a beggar. You must contend to make sure that you are not demoted in life and in destiny. That's why at times, uh, I just remember one young man now. His name is Paul. He has traveled. The first one, he traveled to London. While in London, he was seeing himself in the village, in the mud house. I said, the evil powers of your father's house will soon bring you back. That week, immigration officials catch him. And they deported him. Now, I told him, the root way out is for you to give your life to Christ first. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So he was looking for quick prayer to escape. Just like many of you do that visit prayer houses. They will tell you, you see this anointing oil is 50,000. If you buy this one, nothing will stop you again. You see this one? Nah, 10,000. This one will carry you for two years. <laughs> I 
I know you visited those places. Some people have gone there. Am I saying the truth? Some people have been there before. But if you see this one, this one is 100,000. This one can carry you for 10 years. It's a lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They don't know your spiritual history, so they cannot attack them. So I said, you need to give your life to Christ so that you can be free from this thing through prayers. Now, he's tried and reworked his papers. He traveled again. Do you know what? This time around, he was seeing himself both in primary school uniform. <laughs> and he was seeing himself in the same mud house. They deported him and made sure that he's not granted visa again. You know there are some like that. They, when they stamp your passport, the only thing you go do now, go change your face, give yourself a wound here. <laughs> but they will still catch you through fingerprints. They don't catch you. What causes all those things? Ancestral powers. They can demote you. Do you know why? You have not disarmed them out of your life and out of your family. You must. Say with me, I must. I must. Disarm them. If you don't disarm them, anytime a breakthrough is set for you, they will fight. Paul said, for a great and effectual door is open unto us but there are many adversaries. A sister newly entered into a relationship and an old looking creature appeared to her in a dream and told her that uh, you want to marry, you can't marry. She began to plead the blood of Jesus. This is, this is, say, keep quiet. Keep quiet. The blood of Jesus is not for people like you. Keep quiet. When she was telling me, I said, you are already living dirty, so you can't work for you. That's why she had power to challenge you. The blood of Jesus is not for people like you. Hear me? If you are living careless, if you are living front and back, I bet you the name of Jesus can't work in your mouth. The blood of Jesus can't work for you. A demonic creature challenging you that uh, keep quiet. People like you can't call the blood of Jesus for us. I said, go and bath. You are smelling. Stop messing up so that prayer can work for you. That creature you saw is the strong man of your father's house. Is the custodian of everybody's destiny in your family for it to let you go. You need to clean, clean up first so that we can destroy it. He started crying. Say, Pastor, I'm sorry. Sorry. Now me the thing they do. I mean, you the thing they do. <laughs> she repented. Told the, his boyfriend, I can't call him husband. His boyfriend. That's pastor say, he don't do. And I gave her prayers to do. So when she started the prayer, the thing started warning her. Stop that prayer. Stop that prayer. Stop that prayer. She continued the prayer. They say, Stop disturbing me now. She continued the prayer. The thing started dying. Hear me, I don't know what is holding you. Today it must die. Yeah. I say today it must die. Knowing fully well that ancestral causes are delegated by strong men or strong men are custodian of this to hold everyone ransom. Stop you from seeing what you are ordained for. What is the way out now that you have known the cause? There was young one man called Joseph. He's a pastor. 
I like remembering his testimony because it puts me on a check. Joseph was doing well. And now God visa and travel to America. A pastor. That's why if you are a pastor and you are living careless, you go soon reach village. Demonic powers go deport you to village. They will deport you. So Joseph now travel abroad. You know, traveling abroad means go, to go and look for dollars. Was getting preaching engagement from one place to another. Was moving from one place to another. One day, say with me, one day. One day. The forces, they now came. Joseph, we are from Ororope. How many of us know Ororope? Oh, you know Ororope? Which means you know that away. We are from Ororope. Is that please? The blood of Jesus is a sharab. You are going back to your village. <laughs> you will come back to your village empty handed. They have given everybody in your family into our hand. You want to escape? We are bringing you back to your village. Guess what? That week, say with me, that week, he entered trouble. From there, that's how they withdrew his residence permit. All the people that used to favor him, I've mentioned it before, it turns your helpers to hate us. All the people that were helping him before no longer wanted to see him. That was how Joseph came back to Ororope. As he came back, the prayer he didn't pay attention to, just like some of you now are checking clock for me. Pastor should do and close. The prayer he didn't pay attention to, he now came and started doing the prayer. They were now focusing on the prayer. He started moving from place to place. Where he finally got to, he went to Apostle Suleiman. It was Apostle Suleiman that even helped him. If not, for the roast. What is the way out? Number one, you must be born again. Scripture says he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Your new birth is a function of the power of the blood speaking for your bailout. 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 Number two, you must engage the power of the blood in prayer. If truly you really mean to be free, prayer will not be a casual thing. Prayer, prayer will be a regular thing. Regular. You must be hungry for prayer regularly. The blood is an enemy to any evil order. Christ has redeemed me from the cause of the law. So whatever look like a family cause, ancestral, generational, you are engaging the blood, breaking their holds. Breaking their control over your life. Somebody told me the other day, after we finished 21 day fasting, that he saw himself making love in the dream. I said, you don't start. He said, it's been long. I said, you didn't deal with it. You didn't deal with it. And for that to take place is a sign that a breakthrough is closed that is about to be aborted. Anytime a breakthrough is closed, they will raise an attack. I said, though we have finished 21 days, you are going another three days. I sent him prayers. Engage the blood. Destroy the roots. Jesus said, whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted shall be what? Uprooted. So you don't just pray casual prayers. You don't just pray casual prayers. You can't truly be free from ancestral causes, if your prayer life is casual, shallow, irregular, and much more, you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. The baptism
baptism of the Holy Ghost is not just to limit us to speak in tongues. It connects us back to our spiritual roots. Paul said, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue, all tarets. When you are praying in tongues, you are altering the cause, the evil cause of your family life. No wonder when you pray one minute, you will just suddenly get tired. No. His fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge our floor and burn with unquenchable fire. Meaning, every time you are praying in the Holy Ghost, the fire of God is sweeping through your roots. There is a pattern in your family. The fire is burning, burning every chaff, leaking up the evil water, destroying the source of control of the enemy over your life. So, it's left for you. If you want to... Do, do you know that some people are ashamed of speaking in tongues in this church when they go out? They want them to know. I'm a madman. You will hear it. Whether in bus or in plane. I remember one day I was on, I just sat down. I was just eating. The man looked at me and said, Excuse me, I want to change my seat. Excuse me, I want to change my seat. Why? I don't just feel like. The lady asked me, any problem? I say, ask him. <laughs> Praise God. Tell your neighbor, you need the fire of the Holy Ghost. That fire burns. Now hear me? Causes works like mysteries. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going to. Like what Jesus said, the wind blow it where it's listed. You don't know where it's coming from, neither where it's going to. He says, so is everyone born of the Spirit. So every time you are praying in the Spirit, you are uttering mysteries that you don't know where they are doing it. You, you are uttering mysteries that you don't know when the thing started. You are uttering mysteries that will have affected your life and destiny. Do you know one of the press prophecies hanging on your head this year, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. But let me tell you, these forces, they have seen it. If there is anything that we do, is to fight it from coming to pass. But every time, surely they shall gather, but not by me. Anyone that gather against you, they shall fall. Take cancer together and be broken in pieces. Diverse a strategy. It shall not stand. But you are speaking in tongue, confirming those scriptures. Number four. You must be addicted to sacrifice. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Everyone that is addicted to sacrifice is shutting down the evil altars in his father's house. Our forefathers, they lived by altars and they lived by regular sacrifice. Am I saying the truth? And you, you want to become a city born again, city believer, and you think you can stop those things? You need sacrifice altar, they swallow altar. That's why you need regular sacrifice. You don't need to be a casual giver. It's because you lack this understanding. That's why anytime you are giving offering, you are thinking that it's pastor that is. Do you give more than me? Do you give more than me? Anytime they give, they feel they are giving church money. God said, if I were to be hungry, I will not ask you for food. A cattle upon a thousand hills, they are mine. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. So your giving does not enrich God. It enriches you. Every time you are giving, you are fueling your God-ordained altar to shut down the evil altar. 
That's why scripture says when the enemy shall come, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. If you don't have an altar, you won't have standard. It's only people that have altar that have standard. They only sacrifice once in a year. And these forces, they are attacking you every month. How will you have an edge over them? Tight, you know they pay. So there is no covenant based on win. So anytime they put up a gang up against you, it is working. Why? No sacrifice. No tight. When the Lord turned again, your tithing must be regular. And your sacrifice, as much as God is blessing you, as much as God is blessing you, you shut down the mouth of these evil authors because they know how to cry. That's why we call them evil voices. They cry out anytime they sense a breakthrough coming to pass for your life. What are, they, what are they crying out for? To make sure it doesn't come to pass. I remember the testimony of a sister. She saw herself in the stream in the village. These forces, they confronted her. So you want to break away, eh? They gave your, your four, 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 four fathers, gave everybody in your family to us. Now you want to change level. You are not going anywhere. She started pleading the blood and woke up and started praying. And started praying. She now knew that there is something out to stop her. I want to tell you this. Until you see giving as a delight, you are not qualified to live. That's why we say giving is living. Your giving is your antidote against any evil author or any evil voice or any ancestral voice. Now what you call ancestral, are they more stronger than the ancient of days? That goes to let you know you, there is a mystery in your hand that you must use to silence them. Prayer is there. The blood is there. The anointing is there. Sacrifice is there. Man, you must win. I say you must win. I say you must win. Before we rise up to pray, you need also what we call prophetic blessings. Causes are ancestral in nature. A curse was placed over Reuben. That should be Genesis um, 49 or thereabout. But it was in Deuteronomy 33 that Moses rose up. Let Reuben live and not die. Let not his men be few. Men, it took over 60 years. 60 good years for that curse to be wiped out. Believe the Lord thy God and thou shalt be established. Believe also his prophets. So shall thou prosper. What do your prophets do? Your prophets silence the causes. Trigger the blessings. They trigger the blessings. Your prophets, they change the climates. Your spiritual climates. They change the tide over your life by ushering you into a blessing. Let's do a graphic picture as we rise up to pray. Genesis 27. I'll be very fast. Genesis 27. Let's take it from verse 27. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him. And said, the blessing has started. See, the smell of my son is this, as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Look at the next verse. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth. Somebody should say amen. amen. And plenty of corn and wine. Amen. Look at the next verse now. Let people serve thee. Amen. Let nations bow down to thee. Amen. Be Lord over thy brethren. Amen. This was the trap that caught Esau. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee. And blessed be he that blessed thee. Look at the next verse now. And it came to pass. As soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. That Jacob went yet scarred. Gone out from the presence of Isaac his father. That Esau his brother came in from his hunting. Go now. And he said. And he also has made savory meat and brought it unto his father. 
and he said unto his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that my soul may bless me. That thy soul may bless me. And Isaac, his father said unto him, who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, who, where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me and have eaten of all before thou camest? And I blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and has taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him Lord, and all thy brethren have I given to him for servants. With corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto my son? So blessing sustains. You need the power of the blessing to be sustained. You don't need dollar. It's blessing that control the dollar. It's blessing that control the open door. Look at the next verse. And he so said unto his father, As thou but one blessing, my father, bless me, even me also, O my father. And he saw, lift up his voice and wept. Verse 39 now. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold! Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. He's rewinding the blessing. And of the dew of the heaven from above. And by the sword shalt thou live. And thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. That thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. You need blessing to enter dominion. If you lack blessing, you can never smell dominion. Go to the next verse. I want to say something there. The next verse. Verse 39. 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay you. Shall be you collect her? I'm coming for you. But do you know what? Esau succeeded in breaking it. When Jacob was coming to see him, he brought a bag of rice, bag of granite, bag of corn. He said, Mona, they go first. If you see that one, you go change your mind. When they got to Esau, he said, I don't need your food. God has blessed me. I want to say to someone here, you have been living like an orphan in a church. Many members are living like orphans. Do you know how? They don't believe they are pastors, so the blessing cannot stick. You have been living like orphans. That's why I look as if no prophetic blessing is opening door for you. Isaac was not a prophet, but he understood the blessing. I have blessed him, and indeed, he shall be blessed. You need the blessing to enter your proper destiny. No wonder. Scripture says, Believe the Lord thy God, and thou shalt be established. Believe also his prophet, so shall thou prosper. Lastly, to make the blessing read is Amen. The word Amen, so be it. So be it. Rise up to your feet. Please, take, run to studio. 
Tear it. Tear it. Give them, give me the second part, what they are doing. Now, we are going to pray. Now, this prayer we are going to pray, please, I want you to lay it to heart. Let it not just end here. Follow up on this prayer. Because this year, I want to see you manifest new dawn. Yeah. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. Not being born again is licensing evil powers to still cage you. But you want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are. All eyes closed, all heads bow. Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray this prayer with me, wherever you are, carry your bag and your Bible and come quickly to the front right now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I will pray with you. You will be anointed and something must leave you. Set my heart on fire for you. If you are coming, come quickly, put those hands together for Jesus. Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. As this oil come upon them, every guilt, every legal control of the wicked over your life, today, mark a permanent end in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, as you touch them, put on their palm. As you touch them, put on their palm because they are going to stand here to pray as we are going to pray together. Please open your palm. As they anoint you, they put the oil on your palm. Lord, by the speaking blood, even the blood of Jesus that speaketh better things, every control of the wicked over this life, today, mark a permanent end in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. We are going to pray right now. We just have 10 minutes to round up this service. I've overstretched the time. Studio, put the prayer one now. Please bring out your oil in case you have one. If you don't, bur if you don't have, attach. If you don't have attached, quick, quick. Please, pastors, come and send this oil out, quick, quick. Let them collect. Please, move now. Fast. Just take, carry, go, carry, goes. Please, collect oil. We are taking the first prayer. Take the oil on your palm. Place it on your forehead as we are going to pray. This prayer will be done three, three minutes each and we close. Please, very fast. Move, move. Akin, come and collect, come and collect. Give this, uh, give this man, give this man, give this man. Go, quick, move. Move fast, move fast. Prayer one. 
ancestral control of causes over my life be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever represents an ancestral control, an ancestral manipulation, lift up your voice. Don't pray gentle. He say, cry and be out. Shout and be out. Every ancestral control of causes over my life. Every ancestral limitation of causes over my destiny be consumed by fire. Pastor, give me. Le rangla e janado sata. E ruta pa. Liade sata. Every ancestral control. Every ancestral manipulation. Every ancestral control of causes over my life. Over my destiny. Be consumed by fire. Le kara e te preketo zizo zia. Je katanga la ya gada 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 gada. Read to pali aleta. Every ancestral control, every ancestral manipulation of causes over my life, over my destiny, be swallowed up by fire in the name of Jesus. Whatever represents an ancestral control of causes, of shame, of limitation, of reproach, of stagnation in my life, be consumed by fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, every ancestral control of causes in my life, in my destiny, be swallowed up by fire. Jekote kori yaba ilano dodo resetete. Jeku sizane breketeli ya eraklo pebredi zozena jenandre di le kutete ata. Negaradi ale taga. Negaradi ale taga. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The best you can do for me is to make sure you copy it. If you can snap it, just snap it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Prayer two. Any evil covenant and foundational causes limiting my life break by fire. It is written, it shall come to pass on that day that the body shall be taken off from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And he said, because of the anointing, every yoke shall be destroyed. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Any evil covenant, any evil covenant, please, studio, help me correct it. Any evil covenant and foundational causes limiting my life, break by fire. Any evil covenant and foundational causes Limiting my life, limiting my progress, limiting my breakthrough, limiting my change of level, and my family. Any evil covenant and foundational causes limiting my life by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I command you to break. I command you to break by fire. I command you to break by fire. I command you to break by fire. Reziangle rade nuze zona gada 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 gada. Jego logo rogo dogo brega zega lega dega dega de. Laga do brega dega zega lega brega dega lega dega dega de. Laga zogo dogo brega dega lega dega brega lega dega 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 de. Any evil covenant and foundational causes limiting my life. Break by fire. In the name of Jesus, I command you to break. In the name of Jesus, I command you to break. In the name of Jesus, I command you to break. In the name of Jesus, I command you to break. I command you to break. In the name of Jesus, I command you to break. Jiko Kaprakataya, Lerando Debos. In Jesus' name we pray. 
In Jesus' name we pray. You are going to pray this with the whole of your energy. Prayer 3. O ye strong man, controlling causes in my life and my family, fall down and die. Any marine strong man, marine strong woman, strong man that has vowed that nobody will rise in your family, lift up your voice and cast them down now. In the name of Jesus, O ye strong man, controlling causes in my life, controlling causes in my family, fall down and die. Lego do bush, Jesus and Ege preketeria, Gerardo, Enga ga 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 ga, Lego taria, Menderero, Shekle perere. O ye strong man. Oh, you strong man, controlling causes in my life and my family. Fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Lega raga daga yaga degebre, janondre dile kutetia, jekalaga raga dego rego dia. Oh, you strong man, controlling causes in my life and in my family. Fall down and die now in the name of Jesus. Fall down and die now. In the name of Jesus, fall down and die now. In the name of Jesus, la godo rodo berega derega 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 de ezuka torande ata. Fall down and die now. In the name of Jesus, jekonda la bosha, endi la bosha, la godo shagalagara, rego do gobrega degesi aga. And Dakotala Rindalia. Strong man, your time is up. Strong man, controlling causes in my life. Strong man, manipulating causes in my family. Your time is up. Fall down and die. In the name of Jesus, I dethrone you. I cast you out by fire. Your siege is over. Your control is shattered. Rediane Kuta. Thank you, my father. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Put your right hand on your head as I pray for you. As a saint of Bishop David Oyedepo, I pray for you. Whatever has caged you and limited you, Expires by fire now in the name of Jesus. Whatever limits ancestral cause has placed over you, Jesus is known as the ancient of days. I terminate the stronghold of that cause in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, your life will not know limits, your progress will not be limited. Your success will not be limited. Amen. By the power of the blessing, I decree your life and destiny begin to flourish. Amen. You will not struggle to eat again. Amen. Any wilderness experience you have suffered, I decree from today, it shall be showers of blessings. Amen. I command the earth to open up and favor you. Be blessed with corn and wine. Be satisfied with favor. Prosper on every side. You will no longer be limited in opportunities. From today, I awake your dream helpers. From today, I awake your dream makers. By the four winds of the spirit, let them locate you. You will not be stagnated in life and destiny. Every plan of God over your life that has been resisted, from today, they will come to pass in sequence. From blessings to blessings. From favor to favor. From increase to increase. Your family will not cry again. No more untimely death in your family. Say amen like a believer. Amen. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Congratulations.
Put your hands together for Jesus. All of you, turn and follow this man right now. They'll put some information.